this lesson is going to go over um, all of the theorems that you are supposed to know for grade 9 uh, geometry. So the very first one, and bear with me as we go through this, I know you might know some of these theorems already and I'm hoping you know some of these theorems already. Um, if there's any that you don't know, this might be just a little bit of a refresher or a review. Uh, the very first thing you need to know about angles is what supplementary angles are. A supplementary angle is a straight angle. It's where you have two angles. I mark them maybe with different symbols. The sum of the two angles is 180 degrees. This is one of the properties that a lot of students miss and it's actually really helpful when you're looking at different angles, different diagrams with angles hidden inside and uh, trying to remember this straight line property. Here we have, these are supplementary angles. Together they add up to 180. So what you need to ask yourself is what must the missing value be in here? So we want to know what angle M equals. If this angle on this side is 50 degrees, what is the other angle? Because together they have to equal 180. So to show your work, we might take 180 and subtract 50 and we get 130 degrees. So M equals 130 degrees. We found the missing angle. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So the sum of the two angles, 90 degrees. Together, you see it hidden here, there's this little right angle hidden. And what that means, that symbol, we've seen it before when we did the Pythagorean theorem, that means that there is a right angle there. So together, these angles, if I mark them with different colors, um, maybe this is an angle there, and we have a different angle here. Together, those two angles add up to 90 degrees. You see that there's this nice marked 90 degree angle. If this angle up here is 20 degrees, what must the missing angle be? You know that 70 and 20, that would be 90, so you know the missing angle is 70. How I would show that, I would take 90, I know they add up to 90, I'd take away the angle that I know, and I'd be left with 70. So I know that y equals 70 degrees. The next property, opposite angles, just are that, opposite. They're across from each other. So for example, AOC, so AOC would be this angle. If I look at that angle, and I, I know that that angle is about 95 degrees or something like that. I know that the one across from it, directly across from each other, that they equal each other. So then we look at, so what I want you to say, opposite angles are equal. You might get this question on a test asking you for this missing angle over here. And then you say, yippee, because that's so easy. If it's 80 on this side, it's 80 on the other side. So x equals 80 degrees. Let's think back though to another theorem we did um, we talked about supplementary angles. I want to know what this angle is up here. Do you think you could do that? Because they equal each other. Notice this is a straight line. If they have to add up to 180 together, 100 plus 80 would be 180. This one must also be 100 degrees. If they're across from each other, they equal each other. They're opposite angles. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. Um, so when we, when we do questions, there are a couple of different ways that teachers might get you to do this. They might want you to take the angles that you know, 79 here and 45 there, and add them up. So a lot of teachers ask you to add them up first. But if we took 45 and we added 79, okay, and you add them up and then take that away from 180. Another way a teacher might ask you to do this is just to take 180, which is the sum of all of them together, and subtract the angles that you know. And whatever you're left with, that would be the missing angle. So, I don't know, it depends on how you've done this in the past. It depends on how what feels comfortable to you. When I do this, I get 56 degrees. When I add up 79 and 45, I get 124 degrees. And if I took 180 and subtract 124, I get 56 degrees. So those are the two different methods. To me, this one down here looks a little faster. I take 180, I subtract the angles that I know already, and it gives me 
what's missing. W equals 56 degrees. The next theorem you might not have learned before. I usually teach this and students feel like they might not have seen this before. It's called the isosceles triangle theorem. Isosceles triangle means that two of the sides of the triangle are the same length. So you might remember equilateral triangles and scalene triangles. Isosceles two sides are the same. And what that means directly down towards the bottom of those two sides that are equal to each other, the angles equal each other as well. They are equal. So what does that tell us about this diagram over here? Okay, they want to know what this missing angle is up there, what Z equals. But one thing I do know is there's my equal sides. So at the bottom of those equal sides or opposite the equal sides, if it's 50 degrees on this side, it's 50 degrees on this side. So what does that tell you about Z, angle Z up at the top that might be unknown? We don't know what it is right now. Uh, I know that 50 and 50 equal 100. I know my triangle adds up to 180 degrees. If I subtract 100, I get 80, which means that Z must equal 80 degrees. Equilateral triangles. So there's another theorem in grade 9 that you need to know. An equilateral triangle, just that word, hopefully you know that that means all the sides are equal. So the, these little marks show that all of those side lengths are the same. And what happens to the triangle then is that all of the angles must be the same. So what does that mean? I know this angle B, this angle C, this angle, they call it Y or A, they equal each other. So how, what is the measure of each one? If we take 180 degrees, if we divide by 3, we get 60. And if I add up 60 plus 60 plus 60, I get 180. So that must be the measure of the interior angles of every equilateral triangle. The exterior angle theorem. This is also, this might be new to grade 9 for you. I don't know if uh, you would have seen this before as well. What it is suggesting is that the angle, this is called an exterior angle because it's on the outside of the triangle. You can create exterior angles just by extending, there's an exterior angle, there's an exterior angle, uh, like that. We extend the, the different sides of the triangle to make them a little bit longer and you create an exterior angle. So this is suggesting the exterior angle theorem tells us that on the inside here, across there and there, those angles add up to the one on the outside. A plus B equals C. So what this means for our question here, this angle here plus 20 equals 60. So something plus 20 is 60. How would we figure that out? Um, this time I might take 60 and subtract 20 and I get 40. So does that, do you think that works? Does 40 plus 20 equals 60? And it does. So we know for sure that x equals 40 degrees. Parallel line theorem. We've talked about this already in the last lesson. Corresponding angles, they make an F. I know it's upside down. What it states is that corresponding angles are equal. So x equals w in this case. They're in the same spot, but one is higher and one is lower. This one, awx. So they want to know a w x. This sort of terminology right here, notice that the w is in the middle. So a w x. You go in that order from a to w to x. And that means they're talking about the angle that's in the middle, angle w. Okay, so this one, we're asking to find the measurement there of that angle right there. And as long as you can notice and see that there is an F angled AWX equals 95 degrees. They are the exact same measurement. Parallel line theorem for alternate angles. Remember that alternate angles make a Z. So alternate angles, they're talking about BWX, WXC. So because I see that there's a Z pattern there, they are alternate angles. 
one is on one side of the transversal, one is on the other, they equal each other. So they are equal. From B to W to P, that's this angle. They're asking you to find that angle. Um, the only thing that helps me in this case is my nice Z here, my alternate angles on one side and on the other side of the transversal. So BWP must equal 110 degrees because they're on opposite sides. Parallel line for co-interior. So the last property, the last theorem here that you need to know, um, co-interior angles. This is a little different. It forms a C pattern. They're asking about BWX, BWX, so here, and WXD, so WXD, here those two. Right? So if you focus in on angles like that, I might use different markings. We can use any symbol, X's and O's, or uh, check marks, or stars, or any symbols, but this time I don't want my symbols to be the same. Because, remember with C pattern, or co-interior angles, they are not equal. They add to 180 degrees. So, a C is formed, like here, and hopefully you'll notice they don't look like they're the same size. They add together to 180 degrees, okay? So they're not the same. So this time they want to know the measurement over here of PWA. PWA, whoops, PWA, so it's this angle they're looking for. So right away you try and think of F's. C, Z's, I know these are interior angles right there. I know they're not the same this time. That's the only thing that's different. This is different. These, this down here is not 110. We're looking for another angle that together they add up to 180. 180 minus 110 is 70, right? So the angle must be 70 degrees. Those are the theorems that you need to know. That's pretty much every single angle theorem um, in grade 9, all on one page. So don't lose this sheet.